Fisheries. Hi, Jeff. How are we doing today? We're good, Susanna, but I uh, have to say it's the, uh, the cat amongst the pigeons with the bombshell news that the FA Cup replays are to be scrapped going forwards. So I'm sure you've all seen the news. and it's, it's something like a Hollywood movie. It's all about money, romance and a lack of communication. So there is a huge discussion right now. And the fact that it is right on FA Cup semi-final weekend makes it all the more poignant, if you like. Yeah, so t talk to me about the reaction of these changes that are going to be implemented next year because a lot of these small clubs are, are feeling really hard done by by this decision. Um, what, what are you hearing? Well, a couple of the clubs came out straight away and said that they were furious about it. First of all, the lack of communication. They were saying that they weren't told about this and they had no say on that. But the FAs re also released a statement this morning qualifying that they were told about it and they've been in talks for over a year now. So it all boils down to two things, which is the Premier League clubs, they don't want replays because they feel there are too many games, their players are tired, their players are exhausted, which, you've got to be honest, is quite hypocritical because they'll just go on more end-of-season and pre-season tours. So I would take that with a large <laughs> pinch of salt. The amount of replays as well... <laughs> It's a crowded calendar. It is a crowded calendar. There's no question of that. So this idea has been mooted for some time. It's now it's actually coming into focus what the clubs are saying. This is the EFL clubs and the non-league clubs as well. Hang on, you're denying us two things here. One, potentially huge paydays, absolutely huge paydays when these things happen. In fact, regurgitated story was a magnificent story, which I love, from back in 2005. Burton Albion, who were non-league at the time, they drew Manchester United at home and they're drawing with them. All of a sudden, there's a big shout for a penalty. I think it was Gerard Piquet handball. And the whole of the home crowd all appeal for a penalty, except the chairman, Ben Robinson, because he wanted to replay at Old Trafford because of the money. So <laughs> that tells you what it brings. But for those players, the chance to go there, that's now been taken away from them. How often do those occasions happen? Not quite sure. I mean, we would never have seen Ryan Giggs, his famous goal, his famous celebration, would we? If FA Cup replays, as they are to be, they're gone. On the flip side, the FA Cup will have its own weekend. They will be dedicated weekends to the FA Cup. So that takes out a little bit of the mixture. And also the FA announced this morning that they will give further details of how the prize money will be distributed to those clubs. So I don't think this one is done and dusted completely. And I think it's all about appeasing the EFL clubs. And as usual, the bottom line is money. Simple as that. Yeah, I think what makes this competition special is the romanticism around the smaller clubs hosting the bigger clubs and the Davids versus the Goliaths. Now pivoting to the games this weekend, Jeff, and this is Jimmy Conrad here. Great to see you as always. Manchester City are in their sixth successive semi-final. That is a record for FA Cup appearances, which is amazing. They've lost three of their previous five, which is pretty remarkable given the, this is the great Manchester City. We could see them get knocked out of two competitions in four days. Will that happen, yep. Jeff? That's what I want to know. They're unbeaten <laughs> in their last eight against Chelsea, but they've had two draws between the two clubs this season. Yeah, and look, and Jimmy, look at those games as well. One all at home and that unbelievable 4-4 goal fest at the bridge. It was a magnificent game. So going into the weekend's game, you've got to wonder, haven't you, how much did midweek take out of Manchester City? So Chelsea started the week nicely, a nice cruising 6-0 thrashing of Everton. So they're quite happy. Then they've got a nice period of rest. Manchester City, that would have put a huge amount of effort into that game. And of course, you can't ignore the emotional disappointment. But Kyle Walker has already come out and said, no, nope, we've got to take this. We've got to use this. We've got to put fire in our belly. They want to do the double. You know, the fact that they can't do the double treble anymore is, of course, massively disappointing for them. But at the same time, to pull off a domestic double here in England is exceedingly difficult to do. I think, Jimmy, you alluded to there in your question. We've just become so used to Manchester City steamrolling absolutely everybody. And perhaps... If they win the title and the FA Cup this year, they haven't done it in the previous, if you like, swashbuckling, sweeping all before them as usual. <laughs> but it'd still be an unbelievable feat. But I, I, honestly, I don't think this would be easy. And again, we talk about the romance of the FA Cup. What if Cole Palmer, what if Cole Palmer 
is a man who steps up for Chelsea, the ex-Manchester City guy, the guy who left the club because he wanted more game time. He's got 20 goals so far this season. He's up there with Erling Haaland. It could be written in the script for him. Ooh, that would be fun. So, Jeff, I want to talk to you about Cole Palmer and mm -hmm. just the storylines going into this game for, for a young Manchester City product. What have Chelsea done so well to continue his progress and, and what have you made of his his sensational season. I mean, 20 goals tied with Erling Holland? Like, did, did first, anyone ever Charlie, see that? <laughs> Charlie, the first part is easy to answer. What have they done? They've played him. <laughs> Great having you on, Jeff. <laughs> that's, that's the insight and knowledge I bring. <laughs> yeah, they've given him game time, which is what he wanted, which is why he left the club. Um, it is funny as well. I mean, I do love his nickname, Cold Palmer, and we love his celebration, but... When there was that nonsense in midweek, when the, the, the wrestling match to take the ball, to take the penalty, as quite a few astute observers said, mm, I didn't see much of a wrestling match when it was 4-3 earlier on in the season, and there was massive pressure on whoever was taking that penalty. So that's why he's got that nickname. Look at that coolness of that finish. He does have ice in his veins. And I think the conversation with him around England has moved on. It's not whether or not he should go with England, in the summer now, Charlie. Should he start? And if so, where does he start? And where would you where would you say that is in the England team? And who would come off? Is it is yeah, it I, I'm, Phil Foden I, I coming I, off? Is it Saka coming <laughs> off? Because <Yeah. laughs> we know Harry Kane is You should know by now, Charlie. You should know me well enough that I only have questions. I don't have answers. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Northgate over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but how but how do you fit him in somewhere? You know. What is is he a ten? What you know, exactly where you know behind Harry Kane? Is it Foden and him, or is it Foden and Bellingham? You know, it's it's a lovely, lovely problem for Gary Southgate, and you can't pick more than eleven players. It's as simple as that. But he has done so well, not just with his goals this season, but his demeanour, the way he conducts himself, and also his, if you like, it just doesn't. He never gets carried away. But Charlie, you're a striker. He's got that coolness. He's he's got that temperament to me that marks him out as being a, a, a top class player who will only get better. Uh, Jeff, I want to talk to you a little bit about the other match that's happening: Manchester United versus uh, Coventry City. Coventry City coming in a little bit better form than Manchester United, who haven't won in their last four. Obviously, there's an American on there in Haji, right? So I think a lot of Americans are going to be rooting uh, for Coventry City. Do you give them any chance at all? 100% I do, Alexis. I mean, first and foremost, Manchester United, they give up so many opportunities to the opposition. They concede goals for fun. We don't know what they've got <laughs> defensively available this weekend. We know how short they are, particularly in the centre-half area. And Coventry City, you know, this this is their final, if you like. They've got... they. It's not a case of having nothing to lose. This is a huge day for them. And going into... OK, of course, Manchester United saw off Liverpool... But for Coventry City to see off opposition who are in a higher division than them, that gives them huge confidence. And, and not just Hadji Wright as well, Ellis Sims, he, you know, as a player, he, he is so physical, but he's also got a touch as well. So Manchester United, I do not think, will underestimate Coventry City in any shape or form. And they have, I think they've got more than a puncher's chance. Mark Robbins, he knows the game. He sets his team up well. They'll be difficult to play against. And they won't be afraid. They'll have a real go. And this is the, almost the sadness of the timing of this announcement. This game is what the FA Cup is all about. It's about romance. It's about giant killing. It's about... You can't call Coventry City the little guy. You know, previously they were a Premier League club. And, of course, they famously won the FA Cup as well. But this is what the FA Cup is all about. Would it be a shock? Yes, it would. Would it be a massive surprise? Not necessarily. Because A, Manchester United, as I said, they can see chances, and B, the FA Cup is a great leveller. Jeff, I, a quick question. With a recent settlement of a lawsuit between an American promoter, promotion company, and FIFA, they've sort of settled where now the FIFA may allow some, whether it's Premier League matches or regular season matches from other leagues, to be played in other countries. In particular, I think everyone has their eyes set on America. Do you ever see a day where a Premier League match or maybe even an FA Cup final gets played here on uh, American soil? Well, as you know, um, I actually I sit on the fence that much. I creosote my backside. So if I could <laughs> diplomatically say, um, I I wouldn't 
I wouldn't rule it out, but at the same time, I cannot really do justice to the furore that there would be here. The outcry would be absolutely huge because ordinary supporters, your, your ticket paying, oh, you should never call supporters ordinary, but if you like, your, your ticket paying normal fan would say, hang on. So I go every week, I go to every home game, and now you're going to deny me this opportunity. I think it politically, it would be so difficult to get through. But I think you're right, Alexis. I think it's coming closer or further up the agenda, if you like, but there's still a long way for it to happen. Because at the moment, you've got pretty... I mean, look at the uh, the Club World Cup, that expanding, Champions League expanding. So the landscape is, is changing, no question. But right now, Premier League and FA Cup being played on English soil is sacrosanct. Yeah, I agree with Jeff on that one. Yeah, I just don't think they're going to ever move the FA Cup final out of Wembley because, mm -mm. to your point, it's, it's so important and part of the culture. Now, Jeff, let's look ahead to the Premier League fixtures. Which one stands out for you? Because for me, I'm looking at the two teams that just got knocked out of European competition, and they're both away from home. Liverpool heading down to London to take on Fulham, and then Arsenal heading over to what? take on Wolves. What about Everton, Nottingham Forest? Okay, yeah, relegation maps. battles. Who has time for yeah, relegation battles? <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, I look at that one on Sunday. Everton Forest, that's an absolute belter, isn't it? That is a belting game. And let's not let's not forget West Ham and their efforts in midweek too. So there's, there's great games. Luton Brentford is a fabulous one if you're not a fan of either of those teams. That is a look, looking from behind a cushion to watch that game. Um, if you take the two you asked me about, Wolves, Arsenal, OK. Arsenal have beaten Wolves the last five games, beaten them straight. Wolves not in great form right now. But again, going back to what I said about Manchester City, what did that take out of Arsenal in midweek? This is a huge game for them psychologically. They also had to travel. Of course, they were away in Germany. They've got to bounce back. It's as simple as that. They have to show a response. Listen, they didn't play that badly in, you know, in Munich. And I also feel that going out 1-0 hasn't inflicted huge psychological damage, but it's just being able to lift themselves once again. I mean... Obviously, it's been a terrible week for them. I mean, three losses in one week, that would feel like, well, just all the air has gone out of their balloon. So they've got to get a win there. Simple as that. Liverpool travelling to Fulham. You know, Jurgen Klopp has promised a reaction. So now they have one cup in the bag. They've only got one more tilt for Jurgen's last dance. Fulham won't be easy again. Um, I think they've drawn the last two times they've played. They never quite know what you're going to get from Fulham because they are a team who are capable of pulling off shock results. So that won't be easy either. Honestly, it's a fabulous weekend of football here in both the FA Cup and the Premier League as well. It, there's an enormous amount to look forward to. And come Monday, we'll have yet more huge headlines and stories. Can't wait. Yeah, it's going to be great. Jeff, are you going to any of these matches? At the moment, I might go to Luton. I'm booked in for Chelsea Arsenal on Tuesday. I mean, that we, you know, we haven't even spoken about that. That's that's a huge game as well for both clubs, depending how they've done at the weekend. So, if anywhere, it'll be Luton Brentford for me because I feel that that game could be absolutely pivotal to Luton survival. Which you know, I love Brentford as well, but just because of the size of Luton and what they've achieved without spending any money whatsoever, you know, we're back where we started this conversation. For romantic reasons, I want them to survive. Is it because you think Rob Edwards is handsome? <laughs> it's also because it's, well, to be honest, I, I, won't, I won't deny that. It's also 15 minutes from my house, which is not a very good reason. <laughs> <laughs> See, now that makes sense. <laughs> uh, Jeff, great stuff. Always uh, fabulous to catch up with you. Enjoy the weekend. And uh, yeah, we can't wait to, to see you on Monday to break it all down. Okay. See you, folks. Enjoy your weekend. <laughs> Enjoy the football.